Hi, my name is Brad Bianco and I work for the South Australian Seed Conservation Centre here at the Adelaide Botanic Garden. And today we're going to have a little bit of a walk around the seed orchard. We're going to learn how to collect seeds, what we're looking for to make sure that seeds are ripe and mature and ready to collect, and just talk a little bit about basic seed biology. Here in one of our raised beds, we've got our Glycine latrobiana. It's a nationally vulnerable species. So it has little pods, little pea pods. And we're gonna go over how you look for ripe seeds and, and what, what mature pods look like on, on leguminous plants. So here we have a bit of the plant that has a mix of green pods that aren't ready to collect, brown pods that might be ready to collect. We'll have a closer look in a sec. And pods here that are entirely split open and have already shed their seeds. So here we have a couple of green pods that aren't ripe and we're just going to open that up and have a look at what it looks like inside. So we will have some seeds in here, I can feel that, but they're still really hard and you can see there that the seeds are still green and soft. So they are definitely not ready to collect. These ones here have gone nice and brown, they feel really dry. The pod actually has a little bit of give. It's not turgid and stiff like the other ones. And if I just split one open, I'm hoping that instead of green soft seeds, we can see some nice, there we go, black and hard seeds. And so those seeds we know, their seed coat is nice and hard, they're decently sized seeds, they're ready to collect. We can go ahead and collect some of those pods by hand. Um, just simply pinching them off the plant and putting them in a paper bag. Now a paper bag is important because seeds are alive and they're breathing, they're respiring. Um, and if we put them in something like a plastic bag that doesn't have any permeability, that doesn't actually breathe, those seeds can sweat inside the bag and moisture really is the enemy for good seed storage. So this is a, a native viola, a native violet. Viola betonicifolia, subspecies betonicifolia. That's a mouthful. Most plants will give you some indication to tell you that its seeds are nearly ripe. And for this viola, it's got two types of fruits at the moment. It's got these fruits here that are nodding over. The little capsule is pointing down. Then there are other ones that are starting to poke up a bit. And then there are some which are poking all the way up and this one's actually just started to open and we can see that there are nice dark seeds inside the pod. So those capsules that have started to point upwards and crack and we can see dark seeds inside them, we can collect those now if we take a little bit of stem with it too. And the reason that we do that is because there's still energy left in that stem and if we take it with the stem, those seeds will continue to ripen on inside of our paper bag. Another technique for collecting seeds, particularly if you're not around when the fruits are ripe and shedding their seed, is to put the early fruits in a little mesh bag. So it's important to make sure that you've got the part of the plant that's actually been pollinated. There's not really any point putting flowers into a bag because if they're not visited by a pollinator, they're not gonna set any seed. So here I have a little group of pollinated but unripe capsules. I'm gonna slide my mesh bag over the top and these mesh bags have a little drawstring that I can tie up reasonably firm so that the seeds don't fall out the bottom of the bag. Just a little knot. And this way, if I'm not here when those pods are splitting, the seeds are going to fall into my bag and I'll make sure I actually get some seeds. Here we have a, a native billy button, a Pycnosaurus. And just like some of the other plants we've looked at, there's a real mix of flowers, old fruits and seeds that are ready to collect. And getting to know the plants that you're working with and just observing how they mature over the season, that's probably the best way to learn what am I looking for when I'm looking for ripe seeds. And we'll have a closer look now. And here we have a lineup of flower heads at different stages of maturity. And these are the kinds of things that you want to observe while you're watching your plants grow over the season. We've got an unopened head that hasn't started flowering yet fully open flowers, and the last four are finished flowers at different stages of maturity. This one on the end is completely finished, probably from last season and might have shed its seeds already. And it's at this stage here that we want to collect the seeds, uh, collect the heads. And that's because the flower head has lost most of its yellow color 
it started to go a bit grey and quite fluffy and that, that's the point that we want to collect this species. So here's a Pycnosaurus, a billy button head that I've crushed up in my hand and this is an example of where it's really useful to know what does a seed actually look like and you can find seed images for all of South Australia's native plants on the Plants of South Australia website because most of what I've got in my hand here is chaff, other parts of the flower head and only these little tiny specks here right by my fingernail those are the parts that are seed that will actually produce a new plant. So here we have a, a podolepis, an, another daisy species and this is really characteristic of the other kinds of daisies we have in South Australia where instead of having its seeds in a tight head it has these uh, seed heads here that have a bristly uh, parachute attachment attached to the seed called a pappus, just like a dandelion. And the indication for when this species is ripe is it goes from having a head nodding over to being fully open and shedding its seeds, fluffing up. So daisies are really important in the environment because they're often the food source for little invertebrates, little insects that eat the seeds. And for that reason, when we're collecting daisy seeds, we need to be really careful and paying attention to what we're collecting. Here we have a nice head that's fluffed up, ready to collect. And on this one, I can see that the seeds are nice and fat and filled. And this one, for example, has fluffed up nicely, just like the other one. But if we look closely at some of those seeds, they're shriveled and thin they don't look fat and plump like the other ones that we were looking at. So these ones have either been predated by an insect or they just didn't form. So when you're collecting the seeds of daisies like this, it's really worth checking as you're collecting to make sure that what you're putting in your bag are viable seeds. So another technique for seed collecting, particularly for bigger plants and plants that have lots of little fruits, that collecting them one by one would be too time consuming. You can take a bucket or lay a tarp down or something like that and just beat a section of the plant where you know that there are ripe fruits into the bucket. Take that back for seed cleaning. Good thing about beating the, the plants to get the, the seeds out is that only the ripe capsules will fall off and the unripe capsules will stay on the plant. And I can see that in my hand here, very difficult to see, but those two little brown dots, those are some nice ripe seeds. Okay, we're back at the lab at the Seed Conservation Centre where we do seed cleaning, seed storage and some of our lab experiments. And we've brought our seeds back. It's important to note that we write the name of the species, um, where we collected it and the date that it was collected for good record keeping. These seeds have been left to dry for a couple of weeks in the drying room um, and we're going to do some basic seed cleaning. So we've got the glycine that we were collecting out of the seed orchard and I've selected uh, a metal sieve that has an aperture size that will let just the seed pass through and leave behind the pods. Now you can take something like this rubber bung here and just press the pods against the sieve and they'll crack open and those seeds will fall out. I'll just go through and do that. I'll just remove that top tray that contains most of the empty pods now. Yep. So here in the bottom catch tray, we've got all the seeds that have sieved through without their pods. But for the purposes of sowing these seeds or sending them back to the Seed Conservation Centre for long-term storage, it's not really worth cleaning them down any further than this. For Hard seed coated things like peas, if you treated these seeds with hot water before sowing them, it doesn't matter that there's little bits of frass still in there, they'll still germinate just fine. So here's the billy buttons that we collected earlier and similar principle for seed cleaning, but I've actually got uh, an array of sieves, each progressively getting smaller and smaller. And the thinking here is that the bottom will catch my seeds It'll let anything smaller than a seed pass through to the bottom, which I'll then discard. And the middle, the middle layer will catch bits of the bracts and other floral parts that we don't actually want. And because the aperture of the top sieve is much, much larger than the seeds, I don't have to worry about damaging the seeds. So I'm finished rubbing it with a bung. And I can see in the second tray, 
I've got all of that waste material that doesn't contain any seeds and I'll take that one off and with a small seed like this it's always good to take a little pinch and check under a microscope or a really good hand lens but I can see that this last layer has caught all my seeds so I can discard the other layers and in this one here I've retained all my seeds for sowing or storage. What do you do with the seeds after they've been cleaned? So it's important that they're kept dry and cool. So putting them back inside their paper bag and putting them into a box with dry rice or silica um, and making sure that they're away from high humidity and high temperatures, that's the best thing to do with the seeds after they've been cleaned. And those seeds might be used for propagation. You might be sowing those seeds, in which case hold onto them in that cool dry place or if they're to come back here to the South Australian Seed Conservation Centre, package them up and send them to us as quickly as you can. I hope that this has given you some, some confidence and assurance to make sure that you guys are collecting nice, ripe, viable seeds. And I also just wanted to thank you for your work to help conserve South Australia's threatened flora. Now, we may not have covered the species that you guys are working on at your school, but that's okay. Just use some of the things that we've talked about in this video about observing plants, observing them throughout their flowering cycle and fruiting cycle, and you'll familiarize yourself with them. And along with the Plants of South Australia website, I think you'll be confident to take this task on.